Morning. This is Mary. How can I help you? Hi, Mary. This is Justin McClellan. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you this morning? Doing pretty good. Yeah, I just wanted to call and follow up about the, the listing that you have at 7920 Hill Drive. And, mm -hmm. um, How can I help you with that? Yeah, pretty much, um, I'm interested in this property and I do understand that it's a short sale. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I, uh, I'm an investor and I have a focus of investing in short sales um, primarily in the Midwest and I target single-family homes um, that are approximately above 125000 uh in value. So with this particular property I see that it's, um, it's in a, a bit of disrepair and uh, my sis my assistant told me that um, it's been listed for um, about 140 days. That is correct. Okay. So is there anything else um, that you could be able to tell me about it? Like I'm looking at it right now online. Um, the, yeah, the home, all the carpet is trashed. It all needs to be torn out and replaced. It needs... Um, a really good cleaning, the lower level of it may have <clears throat> mold issues. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's an underground kind of garage underneath the house. Oh, and okay. um, I, think I think just because of the mere fact that it hasn't been adequately heated and you know maintained, um, there's mold issues down there. And then there's also mold issues in the bathroom. I see. Yeah, I think it's upper bathroom. Um, other than that, I mean, it really is not in that bad shape other than it's filthy and some old issues. Gotcha. So it's been vacant for a while? It's been vacant probably for several years. Okay. So probably the pipes are, are busted and everything like that, right? I don't see any evidence of that at this point in time. Um, it has been winterized. Oh, it has it. Okay. So at this point, who owns the property? Is it still, it's been vacant? It's still owned, it, it is still owned by a private owner. Um, I, you know, believe that um, it's probably been in like a pre-foreclosure state for a while. Mm -hmm. Not quite sure why the bank's not taking action on it. I see. Do you, you know? know such a long space time. The only thing I can think of is that um, my seller is in the military, and maybe they have some kind of a program to protect those that are in the military. I got you. Do you know who the lender is on this one? Um, I believe, I believe that it's Chase. Okay. And so is this the first time that he's had it on the market? Yes. It is Chase Home Finance. Okay. So at the um, what's what's the current listing price on it? Um, we were just going to drop it from one forty to one twenty. Okay. Has there been quite a bit of traffic at one forty? I'm sorry. Would you repeat that? Has there been quite a bit of traffic at the one forty price? No. No, not at all. Um, That's there's pretty much traffic in anything, even if it's giveaway price. <laughs> gotcha. So, pretty, mu pretty much the way I work is um, <clears throat> I work hand in hand with a lot of agents, and uh, the deal is since I'm not a realtor or a broker and I don't have any realtor representation, I allow the listing agent 
to be a dual agent if their brokerage allows for it. And therefore, when I buy with that bank approval, then you'd be able to get double the commission. And the way I make my profit is when I buy and uh, I, I basically relist the property for resale um, as is. And um, that's where I make my profit there. And the deal is um, with this, with, well, with any property, the short sale basically lives and dies by the BPO. So um, I like to work with my agents hand in hand, whereas I will cut them in on 20% of the net profit when I resell. If the agent is involved in educating the BPO agent when the time comes and just educating means just like you told me telling them about all those mold issues telling them that the property's been winterized but there may be frozen pipes or you know whatever else um, just things that a BPO agent may overlook just to just to basically uh, cut down on them coming in too high the first time and have to reorder another one and it basically you know extends the whole process three or four months than it has to be, no longer than it has to be. Um, so that's, that's pretty much how I work. I also do like to correspond with the bank directly when I'm negotiating the actual uh, offer. Um, so at this property, I know you said you were going to list it down, or you're going to drop it down to 120. Do you feel what? What would the what would the as is comparables be for this property in that area, like the low end, like the foreclosures and the REO listings? Yeah, I'd have to take a look at it um, more closely to really answer that question for you because it's a moving target. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would have to see what it is at this point in time. I haven't looked at it for a while, but um, certainly this house has more potential than some of the other houses out there that are REO proposed just by its senior size and location. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, I really would need to do it, an in-depth look at it again. Gotcha. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, I definitely would be interested in this one. Uh, I guess now that you know how I work, uh, would you be interested in working with someone such as myself? Um, um, I actually would like to consult with my broker first. Okay. That's fine. So, okay. how about this? Let me send you an email. Um, if, if everything goes over well with your broker. And mm -hmm. um, then you could just reply with the email. Because to get started, what I would need is um, basically what I just asked for as far as the what the comparables are as far as the REO right. and other foreclosure comparables. And then I would also need the high-end comparables, which are basically uh, the, the retail.